Hey everyone, today I'm going to make a video showing all the gear that I use for detecting in the water. Many people ask about the, the headphones or the, the shoes or cameras and stuff like that that I've used in my videos. So this might help some of y'all out. First of all, I use the AT Pro, Garrett AT Pro, with the small 5x8 inch double D search coil for water hunting. It does great in iron infested sites and around forward crossings and near grist mills there's lots of nails in the water so it's great to get in between all the iron and pick out the good stuff it's great on land too I love that coil at the moment I'm using the Grey Ghost amphibian headphones and if y'all do have these you need to connect them in the back like that and then run the wire up the shaft and wrap it around a couple times like I did and take some electrical tape and just tape it so it don't get caught on any limbs or anything and I hooked it right there in the back and that's just a spare bolt I have siliconed on there it's been on there a couple months now but that's if your bolt breaks in your coil from dropping your AT Pro in the water or something somehow you never know when it's going to break even though I've never broke any they can break it sometimes and it's very important you need to put a, a rope on your AT Pro because when you're in the rapids and there's a, a good current moving, your detector will float away. So I put a strap right here where the, the arm strap is and just a little rope. And I hooked it to this carabiner clip. And I clip this on my dig belt right here. And I just swivel it on so it don't come off. I also have a shorter rope. This is for when I'm in like ankle deep water to knee deep. I'll hook this on the side of my belt and it will keep the detector right by my waist the whole time without hitting the ground. As you can tell I ran the wire through there and I drilled a hole in here you can't see it and then I tied a knot and wrapped tape around it but that keeps the, the rope in here. I just got bored one day and did that. But it's very important to have a strap on your detector. Also there's many different types of headphones you can use. First of all these are the standard headphones that come with AT Pro. These are waterproof up to the top of the cord. You cannot get any of this right here wet, but you can go basically neck deep in the water as long as you don't put your head under with these on. So some people don't know that. These are the standard blue Garrett waterproof headphones. This is what they look like when they're new. And I spray painted mine because I don't like blue. I mean, it keeps them less obvious. <laughs> So people don't see them as much but they work great I also put memory foam on the inside so it's not as loud on my ears that helps me out a lot here's the boots I wear when I water hunt they're just little fly fishing boots from Bass Pro Shops they have felt bottoms on them it keeps you from slipping on them flat rocks of algae you don't want to get hurt plus they're uh, great to swim in they don't they're not too stiff on your ankles and you can still move around if you ever got caught in a deep hole and need to swim it's great to wear gloves especially while water hunting there's lots of glass broken bottle tops with glass still on them in the water you need to protect yourself so I have a couple sets of gloves I use here's a basic standard water hunting pouch these don't cost much probably ten bucks I had a friend give this to me but, uh, it has mesh holes in it to get all the sand out and you have a pocket for your good finds and a pocket for your trash and it works great and here's the pouch I'm currently using it's just a little camo pouch it has a zipper pocket that's where I put all my my good finds and cannonballs and stuff down in here and it's always good to carry a pocket knife because if you get caught up on some limbs and rope tangled around you you need to cut it off and so you can get out and this is also great to dig down in the bedrock cracks if your rock pick won't fit I always have a waterproof compartment very important you could put your wallet in here your truck keys like I do to keep the the button from getting water in it or your cell phone or whatever you need to put in there now here's what y'all been waiting for here's the camera I use for my water videos. It's a Olympus TG2. It's about 300 and 
$79. I think it went down now. It's about $350 something on sale. Waterproof to 50 feet deep. Drop proof to about 7. Crush proof. You know, stuff like that. I put a screen protector on there, which keeps me from getting scratched up. But it works very great, especially for close-ups. Now, every now and then, you might have to blow the water out the speaker, because water does get in there. But I always cut that part out. It's a really great camera. Plus, it has a strap, and you can clip it on your pouch. So when you're diving down under, it won't float away. Here's the Pro Pointer. I waterproofed the Garrett Pro Pointer. Now this voids the warranty. So if you do this and it breaks, then they're most likely not going to fix it and going to be mad at you. But I took some silicone and just, I know it looks horrible, but I put a bunch of layers over it. You really don't have to put this much. But I put three layers over the button, two, two layers over the speaker, one over the light, and extra layers all the way around. And I tied a rope to it and silicone the knot. And I have that rope attached to my holster. And I have that attached to a carabiner clip. And I also hook this on my belt. And if it falls off, it's hooked on the clip. And it won't wash away. It won't lose it. So that's very important. Here's the type of stuff you need to buy. It, it's silicone. It comes in a tube or it comes in a little can like this. This is actually a couple years old. But it works just great. And just squeeze it out and put it over the button and let it dry and it will not leak if you do it right it's really simple every now and then it might come off I only use this one for water I have a separate one for land hunting you need a nice pair of goggles I got these at Wally World they're only like 15 bucks they rarely leak and a snorkel I always carry an extra pair of goggles because I always lose some. I don't know why, but I'll be in the rapids somewhere and they'll get washed off my head and I'll lose them. And here's the digging equipment I use. I don't use a sand scoop basically because the areas I detect it's really rocky, lots of gravel and bedrock, and a sand scoop is not going to work. Most of the stuff's right on top of the ground anyway, unless you're searching in the ocean or something. But just a little rock pick. I got it from Lowe's. I've had it a couple years. I sawed the handle off. It was 36 inches long at one time. Now it's about 25 or 24. And I put a magnet on the end. I actually got the magnet off my Technetics rock pick. And uh, it's a pretty strong magnet. It could pick up cannonballs. I mean, it's not the strongest magnet, but it really helps a lot when you're water hunting. You get a jumpy signal and put that magnet down in the water and pick up all the nails and stuff out your way and then see if there's anything left it really helps out a lot so that's about it I just wanted to show y'all everything I use for water hunting really once you get used to it it's pretty simple it's not that difficult I mean it is a little bit harder than searching on land I mean you have to know what you're doing kinda here's my land setup I use the AT Pro with the big coil for scouting sites. Now if I'm at a house site I'll use a small coil. For searching on land sites I really recommend Killer Bee headphones. I have three sets of Killer Bee headphones. These are Killer, Killer Bee camo ones. They're like $107 I think. But you have this switch here and if you flip this switch up it allows you to hear the AT Pro through the external speaker when you turn it on. See? And then when you flip it back down if I can do that in one hand you only hear it through the headphones. So that's really cool for if you do videos and you would like to just flip a switch and let the sound come out the speaker instead of unplugging your headphones. But I love them. I've had these for two years or a year and a half. Whenever they came out, I, I got them. I like them a lot. also have the Killer Bee Wasp headphones. They work great too. And they have an extra circuit switch so you can use them with pulse machines. And you will need an adapter if you use these headphones. And what you should do, instead of doing it like me, I just put this on here recently, but you should take your arm cuff off and run your adapter wire through the, the foam handle. Wrap it around a couple times, tape it with electrical tape. And instead of using one of these cheap plastic clips right here, go to like the hardware store and get you a, 
a little electrical cable clamp, I guess you would call it. It looks just like this, but it, it fits a lot tighter and it will keep the adapter piece from wiggling around. And if it wiggles around like this, it will cause it to break if you're rough. So that's just a tip right there to get you a stronger clip which holds it in place. And then tape your, your wire around so the thorns and brush don't tear it apart. And that will keep your adapter to last a lot longer. Because if, if you don't do that, they might break in a couple weeks. But if you do that, I mean, they, they can last all year, if not longer. I'm just rough on my stuff, so I've had a lot of bad luck. Also, I forgot to mention this. If you see on the AT Pro here, it comes with these little bolts. Now, if you're rough like me, when you're out in the river, you slip and fall and drop your AT Pro, and then it breaks off, you got to reinforce. So I took some longer bolts. These only go right there. They're only an inch and one-fourth long. I took some some screws just like this and I, I put them all the way up in there they're an inch and a half long and I mean it's sturdy here's what I mean I took them and I put them in this AT Pro here and they go all the way up in there this control box is solid as a rock you could drop it or anything and it will not come off I mean it don't even move so I, I thought that was a good idea but anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped out. And if you have any questions, please ask.